I don't know whether the man is still down there, but I kid you not, about 5.30 this afternoon as I was coming in from 30 Rockefeller Plaza, there was a man down there. I felt sorry for him. He was wearing a white sheet and sandals. Now, I'm not making fun of him. He had a sign, and it says, the end of the world is near. Now, I mean, he was sincere in his belief, and I'm always a little touched by that and moved. And uh, I don't want to be immodest, but I don't feel it's true. I feel I'd be one of the first to know. And, uh, <laughs> I, 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 and I tell you, you know. So as I went by him, he said to me, where will you spend eternity? And he gave me a leaflet. And I didn't know what to say. Where will I? I I'm not ready for I had living on the street with, with people in sheets, you know. And I just said, thank you. And now I have the answer. If he's down there when I go home and he asks me where I'm going to spend eternity, I'm going to spend it with most of you on the Long Island Expressway. <laughs> Strange things are happening around, you know. Why is it that people don't dance together anymore? I mean, the music starts and you get up with the girl and you don't see her again till the thing is over. It's like being an only child and going on your honeymoon with your sister. <laughs> why, why is it that children's shoes are so expensive? Could it be that it's not the shoes, it's the balloons they give with the shoes? Could that be it? And if there is an unemployment problem in this country, why is it that you can't hire a housekeeper anymore for $65 a week plus room and board? Why? Maybe, maybe, maybe it's understandable. There's such a demand for movie starlets. That perhaps is one of the reasons. Why does everybody else want a taxi cab at the very same moment that I do? I mean, a little rain never hurt anybody. <laughs> why is it that the taxi meter jumps on that last stop after you have the change already. Another dime. It isn't the money, but you have to get more change. That means, and if you're wearing a tight Brooks Brothers suit, you have to lie down on the floor again. <laughs> and the Why is it when you want to go down the elevator, you press the button, and it's always going up? Why is that? And when you do get in, it's very crowded, and the operator says, everybody step to the back and face the front. Well, I want to face the front, but I can't because the woman... The woman facing me, somehow her umbrella got between my legs and opened it. <laughs> and... and I don't want to move because there's no known cure for umbrella poisoning, you know. I just <laughs> stay right there. Why is it that they always show you pictures of people getting off a long bus trip and they're smiling? <laughs> Why is it the kitchen sinks on TV are easier to clean than the ones at home? Why, Why do the TV weather girls always get dressed like they're going to a big swanky party? It makes me feel uninvited sitting there in my bedroom slippers and my pajamas and my shawl. I feel left out of it. Why do weather girls always say the barometer is falling, the barometer is rising? I have had a barometer. It hasn't moved in 17 years. Well, it did once. It was a hurricane, and it jumped off the wall and hit under the bed, but it didn't happen. Why, uh, why do wives always throw their arms around you and ask the same question, do you love me, at 6 o'clock in the morning? It's very embarrassing to answer. And if you say no, it starts the whole day off on the, on the wrong foot. Why is everything labeled non-habit forming? There's nothing that isn't habit forming. This includes everything from aspirin to women. Why... why why is it the audience has changed their mind after I've come out here? <laughs> Why is it when somebody dials a wrong telephone number and gets me, they act like it's my fault? <laughs> You'd be surprised the people who just won't believe that we're not the uh, Sears and Roebuck uh, garden tool department, you know. I say, I'm sorry you have the wrong number. They say, what? Uh, they say, uh, uh, are you sure? And I say, well, have, have I ever lied to you before? You know? <laughs> they cannot believe that they have dialed the wrong number. They feel that I have answered incorrectly. That's the thing. <laughs> or sometimes they'll say, is Mildred there? And I'll say, I think you have the wrong number. What number is this? What number are you calling? So now the answer is you say, Mildred's here, but she's too drunk to come to the phone. <laughs> why, are, why are stockbrokers so anxious to give you advice? 
Why don't they take their own advice and get rich? Why do they need a middleman like you? Why, uh, why do they have station wagons with 300 horsepower and advertise them as just the thing to take the family to the picnic? Why do they advertise that it has disc brakes, four-wheel disc brakes? Because that's very dangerous. You're going 100 miles an hour on the New Jersey Turnpike, and you'll apply the brakes the car stops like that. But you and your family continue on <laughs> to Norfolk, Virginia, you know. But you'll be in time for a good table, so I guess it's all right. Why is it when you're sitting in a restaurant with your wife, she always discovers a draft? Are there, are there drafts we haven't... Are there female drafts just for women? I, I think it is. Why is it when you meet someone on the street... Now, I have a very good memory, people tell me. And I meet a friend that I've known for some time, and they walk up, and I cannot think of their name. And so you do some fancy footwork, you say, pal, or old oh, friend, and that's all right. And then you break into a cold sweat because coming down the street is another old friend whose name you cannot remember. Well, this calls for some fast thinking. You say, uh, do you two know each other? And you pray a little. <laughs> and if they say no, then you're desperate. And you say, uh, well, you should. <laughs> then you say, uh, you, you won't believe this, but uh, you tell him your name. And he, he says, puzzled, Joe Smith. And you say, isn't that the most usual name you've ever heard of? You know? <laughs> I wish I had an ending for this bit. <laughs> you know, I was thinking tonight, I was thinking tonight uh, on the old show, at this very spot, very spot here, I walked out. Now, I don't use a script. And what I do is I'll, the last hour before I come out, every night in those days, I'll sit down, and I have very good writers, of course, and they supply material, and I have my own reaction and my own opinions of what's going on in the world. And so I write out in longhand. Now, if I am not disturbed, I mean, if no one will talk to me, I can memorize 8, 10, 12 minutes every night, unless I'm distracted. So I walked out here one night and stood. But just the moment before I walked out, there was an actress whose name I won't mention. One of the most beautiful women. She was a model, and... Uh, and an actress, beautiful girl, very intelligent. I'm very fond of her. And she came back at the moment. And I said, hello, sweetie, how are you? And she, I said, how's the child? And she, her lip began to tremble. And I said, oh, my God, what's wrong? She said, my husband and I are being divorced today. And with that, she began to sob on my shoulder. Well, I was so taken back and so shocked and so sick at this, because they're nice people, that I heard the theme, and I heard his jack. And I walked to this spot. And all I could think of what was happening back there. Now, I'm not going to blurt it out and say what happened like I usually do. It only makes it worse and would hurt her. So I said, good evening. I can't think of a thing to say. And so I said, good evening. I've been drinking. <laughs> and, well, I'd rather... I'd rather be known, you know, as a, having a small alcoholic problem than that I was some kind of a nut or something. <laughs> I don't have my... How long have I done out here? Control room? Uh, I don't exactly, Jack. It seems like forever, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, ha have I done enough? You have as far as we're concerned. <laughs> That's all right. I like to hear opinions even from the unemployed. <laughs> Here's a message from our sponsor.